Oops. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all here this Palm Sunday morning. Just a uh, quick reminder of uh, a slightly new format that we're using. Um, in each of your bulletins, you should find a uh, little attendance card here. If you could give us a record of your presence, that would be wonderful. If you're visiting with us, uh, if you would give us a maybe email address or mailing address so we can thank you for worshiping with us, we would very much appreciate that. Also, on the back of this card, you can leave um, any prayer requests that you have uh, for the week or for anything. And uh, we'll keep, uh, keep all those things in our prayers uh, throughout the week and until you tell us to stop. So that's, uh, that's there. Please, uh, and you can just drop that right into the offering plate as, uh, as it comes around. I have to put this a bit lower. Good morning. Can everybody hear me? Just a couple of announcements. Well, a few, I should say. There is a food pantry delivery this week. If anybody's around, it's at 10 o'clock. If you can help, that would be appreciated. Oh, Tuesday morning, I'm sorry, Tuesday morning. If I could read, I'd be okay. And then today, following worship, Dave Titus is going to be doing a presentation of the Holy Land of his trip. So everybody stick around for that. Get something to drink. And Is it in Airman Hall? It's going to be in the chapel. So please join for that. And then on Monday, Thursday night at 6 o'clock, we'll be in Airman Hall. We're going to have a light dinner, and we'll have communion served by ourselves. So please be there. Um, everybody, that's a good time to get together for fellowship and for such a good service. And then the last thing I have is right now we have the um, Hand of Hope, one great out of sharing. You should see that in your bulletin. Easy way to do it is scan that little barcode, the QR code will take you right to how to donate. Otherwise, you can send a check in like you normally would. So please do that if you're able. Welcome. May you find God's love, peace, grace, and joy as we worship today. Courage. We summon every ounce of courage. We give ourselves pep talks, and we call our friends. We dig deep within. We practice the words out loud, rolling them around in our mouths, imagining the response. We deal out every what-if card our brain holds on to and spend absurd amounts of time imagining all the ways it could go wrong. And then finally, blessedly, we say it, I love you. To speak the truth of your heart takes courage. It always has. But please, summon your courage, join the parade, and speak with conviction. For God has been saying to the world since day one, I love you. What is your response?
how lucky are we to be blessed with wonderful musicians. Um, please stand as you are able. Sing songs of loudest praise. Sing songs that are unashamed. Sing songs without being afraid. Let us worship one worthy to be praised. Our opening hymn is 197 in the Glory to God hymnal. Please be seated. The Gospel of John tells us that crowds gathered to praise Jesus as he entered Jerusalem, singing and shouting with confidence. After describing the crowd, however, the Gospel writer zooms in on the disciples and tells us that while the crowd shouted praise at Jesus, the disciples were confused. The text says the disciples did not understand what was happening. A lot of our lives may look like this. Either we understand God's presence in our lives and want to shout it from the rooftop, or we're standing on the side of the parade missing our chance to sing. That is why we need the prayer of confession, because life happens fast, and without a doubt, we have stood where the disciples stood. So let us pray, for we don't want to miss our chance to sing. Holy God, we want to run into the streets and sing your praise. We want to be bold and unashamed of this good news, gospel. However, too often we find ourselves standing against the wall. Too often we stay quiet. Too often we let others carry the song. Forgive us for the moments when we could lead the parade, but instead, find ourselves standing on the sidelines. Show us what songs are ours to sing. Show us which parades are ours to lead. 
and then give us the courage and conviction to do both. With hope and honesty, we pray. Amen. Friends, no matter where you are on the parade route, whether you are waving palm branches through the streets or standing against the wall, quiet and cautious, Jesus marched for you. Jesus' love, his strive for justice and mercy, it was for you. You are included in this story and nothing can ever change that. So hear these words and trust them deep in your bones. We have reason to sing. For Jesus Christ loved you yesterday, Jesus Christ loves you today, and Jesus Christ will love you tomorrow. You are forgiven, claimed, and sent to serve. Go out and sing. Go out trusting these words. Amen. made us the blessed community, the church. Let us greet one another in whatever way we can, with the peace and joy of Christ. Peace and joy be with you.
Please pray with me. God of grace, Your Word is like a song. It is the melody that we long to sing. The refrain that we pray will get stuck in our heads. So as we return to Scripture once more, we pray that You would allow us to sink into this song. Allow us to hear the truth in between the words. Allow the cry of the crowd's hosannas to feel like our own. With open hearts and open ears, we pray. Amen. Our Scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 12. It can be found in your pew Bibles on page 106 in the New Testament. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet Him shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it was written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. May the Lord grant us hearts and minds to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. This morning, as we get closer to Holy Week, our focus on Peter kind of zooms out and we are uh, not sure where he stands in the crowd. But it offers us this opportunity as well to as the prayer of confession suggested, figure out where we stand in this crowd as well. Someone mentioned that they were reading this book the last week um, that's by uh, uh, Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan. It is a book that goes into kind of the full last week, beginning with Palm Sunday all the way through to Easter Sunday. And I want to paint a little picture out of this book because I think it helps us to focus in on the question of where we stand. We don't know how many times Peter went to Jerusalem for the big festivals. We don't know if he ever even made it as a poor fisherman down to Jerusalem. But he did go this time with Jesus. And Passover was one of the biggest feast days in Jerusalem because it was the celebration of the people's liberation from the Egyptian Empire. Now, if you are the current empire that rules over Jerusalem, and there's about to be thousands of thousands of people streaming into the city to celebrate a festival where they rise up and <laughs> flee and defeat the empire that was over them, how do you think you're feeling about this festival that comes around every year? Well, it made them nervous. And what they would often do is right before the festival began, Pilate, who lived out in a nice little resort area by the sea, <laughs> um, would come into town with a regiment of soldiers. And they would come and march through the city and make it very clear to all the pilgrims who were coming in that this was not the year <laughs> to rise up and think that there was going to be another liberation of the people. They would come in through the west gate, through the main thoroughfare, with their arms dressed in their shiny shields and spears and stomping through the street. And people would gather to see it. 
Some of them probably paid to be there. <laughs> Some of them probably aware that if you didn't show up, you might get singled out as someone who was not respectful of the Roman authorities. And this spectacle, again, would make it very clear who was in charge, who was in control. But our story happens at the back door. <laughs> Jesus comes in from Bethany through the east side of the city. Enters and comes processing on a donkey. No other soldiers around. We guess Peter might have had his sword because we find out later that you know he's, <laughs> he's ready to use that. But uh, no great display of arms. Just the children and the people who gather to sing to lay their cloaks. Now, if the disciples had not been to Jerusalem, had not seen the great procession of the, of the Roman regiment coming in, they had heard about it. They knew that this is what happened. So when Jesus comes in riding on a donkey and just this little procession of kids and people throwing their cloaks, they don't understand what's going on. It doesn't make a lot of sense. What's happening here? Are you thinking that this little demonstration is going to compare to what the people just saw from the empire? Are you legitimately challenging this great power by, walk, by riding in on this little donkey? They don't understand it. I submit to you that this type of scene plays out all the time in our world. The empires of this world have the shiniest stuff. <laughs> they make the loudest noise. And if you think about challenging even that, they have some other stuff in mind for you. Sometimes when you marched into Jerusalem, there was a nice row of crucified people <laughs> meeting you. So you knew what would happen if you stood up against the powers. But Jesus, Jesus knew that he had a mission, a vocation, of peace and justice and mercy in the world. He knew that he had to ride into Jerusalem. And whoever would come along, he welcomed them along. He gathered around him the fishermen the peasants, the children. Because those were the people who literally had nothing to lose. They, he knew that they would march with Him. They would go with Him. Because they were desperate for justice. They were desperate to see the shalom that God promised unleashed in the world. Where do we stand in the processions of our day? We all in this room really by 
accident of birth for most of us or by some strange path that led us here have ended up in the empire of our day. We are citizens of a place even greater than Rome was. That marches around the world with the same flash and noise and willingness to obliterate those that stand in the way. Where do we stand in the processions happening in our world? For there are always the small, cast aside voices marching, calling for peace, for justice, for mercy in the world, asking us to join the songs that sing about the day when God's love and mercy and justice will fill the earth, calling us to cast aside the weapons of war, to reshape them, the swords into plowshares, Where do we stand? What do we sing? What path are we taking? We stand here today knowing the rest of the journey that Jesus took. The disciples didn't have <laughs> that advantage on that day. But we hear that they remember. When Jesus is glorified, they remember that this was the path that had to be followed. That He would have to challenge those who would end up crucifying Him. He would have to speak out for His fishermen friends, for His peasant friends, for those who were being exploited by the people who occupied them. No matter the cost. And they remembered They remembered that come Easter Sunday, that all that they tried to do, all that they tried to squash, all that they tried to kill would not die. That the song of peace and justice and love that those kids were singing that day is the true tune that is planted in each of our hearts. It is the thing that truly resonates for us in this world. If we can tune out the stomping, marching of the empire, if we can turn our eyes toward the one humbly riding on the donkey instead of the one with the shields and the spears. We can hear again. 
we can see even in our world all the places where the people who sing the song of peace are calling us to join with them in songs of loudest praise. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we find it hard to hear you. We find it hard to see the truth of your love and peace and justice in this world. But again, on this Palm Sunday, we know that even children can see it. But it is all around us. It's calling out to us. Help us to join in the song. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. A cheering, chanting, dizzy crowd, and 
that strip the green trees bare, and howling grasses sing aloud with branches in the air. They laid their garments in the road and burned his path with bombs, and vows of lasting love bestowed with royal hymns and songs. They dimmed down to deepening dark, the crowd began to fade, till only trampled leaves and bark were left from the parade. Lest we be fooled because our hearts have searched with passing praise, remind us God works this week, starts where Christ has fixed his gaze. Instead of bombs, a winding sheet will have to be unrolled. A carpet much more fit to greet the King across world. Remain standing as we have <laughs> Caught you as we affirm our faith using the affirmation of faith uh, in the bulletin. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who rode through the streets of Jerusalem on a donkey. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who challenged Rome's oppressive power with peaceful protests. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who was surrounded by crowds of dreamers and believers. We believe in Jesus of Nazareth, so even today we will sing songs of loudest praise. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. You may be seated. Just a quick reminder that uh, the attendance card is uh, in your bullets, and so if you would uh, give us a record of your presence, that would be great. If you're visiting with us, please uh, give us an email address or mailing address so we can thank you for being here. Also to all you watching along um, now or later, uh, greetings to you as well. This is our opportunity out of all that God has blessed us with to return a portion with our morning offering.
may be seated. Once again, as we turn to a time of prayer, the prayer concerns uh, from our congregation are found on page 12 uh, in the bulletin. There will be a, a time of silence so we can lift um, those, those prayers up to God and anything else on your hearts. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come to this place this morning rejoicing that we can hear again of your love for us, your abiding presence among us, your desire to hear us sing songs of your love and peace and justice in this world. To be people who not only speak your good news, but bear it into the world through our acts of kindness, our acts of justice, the ways that we seek to make peace. Help us in these coming days to find our voice, to find a way to challenge what seems like the unending and unendable march of genocide in Gaza. Give us the courage. Give us the understanding. Help us help us to speak help us to act for this is not the only place where there is an intentional starvation and strangulation of people. We think, we think now of the parade of aid trucks just sitting outside the walls. Waiting to bring the simplest things food and healing. How can we be a part of bringing that parade to its destination? This week we also heard of some small protests for food and electricity in Cuba where our hearts are always drawn to. We are reminded again that those who publish the wills and desires of our empire seek to highlight the hunger of others 
as a way to castigate other governments. While the whole world has been singing, has been crying out for us to stop our illegal blockade of that country which starves. and seeks to create the very hunger and desperation that we see now. There are so many, so many other places around our world and in our own backyard. We must raise our voices. We must tune our hearts To where you are calling us to be people of your peace and justice. And there are so many things in our homes and in our lives that are on our hearts today. So we take a moment in silence to lift them before you. Loving God, with all that has been brought before you here in this place, we don't ask that you hear us because we know that you do. We simply ask that you help us to understand, that you help us to be reminded of the depth of your love for us and help us to hear where you are calling us to move and act in this world. And we ask that you hear us as we pray the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, 
Now may the love of God, the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the very peace and presence of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Turning our hearts to you, turning our minds to you, turning our time to you, our hope, turning our eyes to you, turning our strength to you. Turning our world to you, our God. And after all we've said and done, after all. 